balcony hills that have attracted so many foreigners to settle for a while in the comfort of their natural beauty. To the west of Florence lies the Ligurian Sea. Inland a little lies a city which was once a major trading capital. Well, no surprises for guessing where we are now. I could give you a clue, of course. Yes, this is Pisa, and it's not just the Belfry which is so exciting here. There is a lot to see, because once upon a time, like the 12th century, this was a major trading post in Italy. Pisa, that is. It's on the Arno River. It's only about 12 kilometres inland from the sea, so therefore it was a very important trading post for this big commercial centre as Pisa was in the 12th century. Eventually other states overtook it, and of course the Arno itself silted up, so therefore it was no longer possible to do the trading from here. However, the influences were immense because the traders here were exposed to the east, and therefore you can see that in the beautiful Duomo, the cathedral here, you can see the influences from the east as well as the west in the building of that in the 11th century. And alongside it, started round about the late 12th century, was the Belfry, or as we know it now, the famous Leaning Tower, and it started leaning from about the third story up under construction. And it's been contributed to by people like uh, conducting experiments. Galileo used to uh, test the velocity of falling objects from this tower, so he did a bit of leaning himself. And about 20 years ago, I did the same thing. I climbed to the top, and I was leaning. So I probably have contributed to the state that this tower is in today. The top of the eight-story tower was reached by climbing 294 steps in a spiral on the inner side of the tower walls. As the lean became too precarious and the tower was in danger of collapsing, steel cables were attached to restrain it, were no longer permitted to climb the tower. Once a Greek colony and Etruscan city, a Roman settlement and then a great marine republic. Today it's best known for this scene on the so-called Field of Miracles.
bronze statue of Leonardo da Vinci gazing across the piazza towards La Scala. This amazing shopping arcade was opened in 1867 in the presence of King Victor Emmanuel and was named after him as the Gararia Vittorio Emmanuel. The building, although a regular meeting place for the Milanese today, was controversial. It was started by a British company which went bankrupt and had to be finished by the municipal administrators of Milan. High above the shoppers, four mosaics depict Europe, Asia, Africa and America. But down below, Milan is busy putting its own stamp on high fashion. Just outside the Triumphal Arch, also built to honor Victor Emmanuel for uniting Italy, is the vast Piazza del Duomo. But the real landmark is the Duomo itself. Work on this enormous Gothic cathedral, which occupies 11,000 square meters and is 158 meters long and 93 meters wide, began in 1386. It's been added to or restored in every century since. There have been many comments passed about the building. Mark Twain called it a poem in marble. British novelist D.H. Lawrence thought it was an imitation hedgehog of a cathedral. The exterior is certainly a little pointy. It has 135 pinnacles and 2,245 marble statues adorning it. Highest of all is the gilded statue, the small Madonna. The interior of the church has five aisles stretching from the entrance to the altar. And there are these magnificent stained glass windows. But Milan's real art treasure, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, is not among the cathedral's many adornments. It's to be found on the back wall of the 15th century basilica of Santa Maria della Grazia, further across town.